Welcome back. If you haven't watched part one of these guides, then I suggest you do so now. In the first guide, we saw that the names given to a particular control device and its inputs are system dependent. This is a real problem if we want to distribute our application. For instance, if the end user has a different operating system or does not have the exact same control device we used to create the sketch, then the application won't work without changing the source code. Not something we can expect the end user to do. In the next video, I will show you how to create processes sketches that need this library. But for now, I want to show you this library in action. We will start with one of the examples that come with the library, PCP Gamepad. I created this sketch using an Xbox 360 wired controller connected to an iMac running OS X. So if you aren't running OS X or don't have this particular controller, then you will find this next bit really useful. So let's start the sketch. The eyes are controlled with the con Xbox controller. The left joystick controls what the eyes are looking at, so we can go left, we can go right using the X axis, up and down using the Y axis. The eyelids and eyebrows are controlled with the right joystick. Push the stick up to raise the eyebrows, down to lower the lids. We can press either of the shoulder buttons to dilate the eyes. So we have the left button, right button. So we're using three sliders and two buttons to control these eyes. So let's test the library. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to stop the sketch. I'm going to unplug the Xbox controller and connect my joystick. So now that I've unplugged the gamepad, let's relaunch our program. Notice that the program hasn't started straight away, but what it has done is opened a new window. This new window will list all the devices it can find. And it opened it because it couldn't find the gamepad. It allows us to select one of the devices and then configure that device to work with our application. So if we look here, we've got a joystick, a mouse and a trackpad. I'm going to pick the joystick and if I click on the button at the side, a new window appears. I'll just drag that up a bit. This window allows us to configure the joystick and there's three main sections to it. The centre section shows us all the inputs associated with the joystick. The first four, which are pale blue, represent sliders. The next 12, which are pink, are buttons. And right at the bottom there, there's the green box, which is the hat on the top of the joystick. On the left hand side, the five boxes represent the inputs that we require for our application. They're color coded to match the joystick, so we require three sliders and two buttons. Notice that we already have four connections and this is because some of the names used by the joystick for its inputs are the same as the names used by the Xbox. So what we're going to do now, we're going to check that the connections that we've got are the ones that they want. The first one we're going to do is the pupil X and the pupil Y position. So if I move the joystick forward, we can see that the Y slider is moving and if we move the joystick left and right we can see that the X slider is moving. So they're fine, we can use the joystick to move the eyes. What about the eyelids? Well we've got two sliders left. The first one is the twist on the joystick. So if I twist the joystick, we can see that number three, the RZ one, is doing it. But that's not going to be very convenient, not when we've tried to push twists all at the same time. The fourth slider is the little arm, which appears behind the actual joystick. And this looks appropriate. So we're going to use that one for the eyelids. So let's do that one. So what we want to do is we want to connect this one to the eyelid and brow. So now what's going to happen is that this 
lever will it now control the eyelids. Now what about the pupil size buttons? Well it's been connected to buttons 4 and 5. If I start pressing the buttons on the joystick we can see that they're indicated there. If I use the hat, we can see the hat at the bottom there. Okay. But these aren't the ones. Ah, oh, look, I found number four and I found number five. Um, these are not very convenient buttons. What I want to use is the trigger. There we go. Well, that's not zero. And the one button that's underneath the thumb on the side of the joystick, and that's number one. So I want to replace four and five by zero and one. So we go to our pupil size and I'm going to now click this and drag it to zero and this will replace the existing connection. And similarly for the other one. So what will happen now is uh, position zero and one, buttons zero and one will make the pupils dilate. Okay, so we're just about there. All we've got to do is say, well, now use this configuration. So on the right-hand pane here, we've got a number of buttons. If we make a mistake, we can cancel the configuration and exit the program. But we're quite happy with this, so we're going to click on Use. So we click on the Use button, and now Application launches. But now, instead of using the Xbox, we can use the joystick. So now I'm going to push the joystick forward. The eyes go up. Pull the joystick back, the eyes go down, left, right, try the buttons, oh, here we go, dilate, dilate, so the trigger and the thumb button, and finally there's our eyebrows and eyelids. Okay, so we've managed to reconfigure our sketch to work with the joystick, and next time we run this sketch it will look for the joystick and will use a joystick if it can. And all that without having to modify a line of code. Just what we need.